Self-discipline is the center of all material success. You cannot win the war against the world if you can't win the war against your own mind. I love this one. Fail early, fail often, fail forward. Um, you know, it's always a little bit frustrating to me when, when people have a negative relationship with failure. Failure is a massive part of being able to be successful. You have to get comfortable with failure. You have, you have to actually seek failure. Failure is where all of the lessons are. You know, when you go to the gym and you work out, you're actually seeking failure. You want to take your muscles to the point where you get to failure because that's where the, the adaptation is. That's where growth is. Successful people fail a lot. They fail a whole lot more than they succeed, but they extract the lessons from the failure and they use that, the, the energy and they use the wisdom to come around to the next phase of success. You gotta take a shot. You have to live at the edge of your capabilities. You gotta live where you're almost certain you're gonna fail. That's the reason for practice. Practice is controlled failure. You're getting to your limit, getting to your limit, getting to your limit. You can't lift that, you can't do that you, until you get to the point that all of a sudden your body makes the adjustment and then you can do it. Failure uh, actually helps you to recognize the areas where you need to evolve. So fail early, fail often, fail forward. So I do uh, scream to me the other night, hey Will, I wanna be an actor, man. I wanna be an actor just like you. People say stuff to me like that. I'm like, yeah, man, you know, you can do it. Just give them an encouraging word. But I was just sitting in here thinking and it dawned on me, 99% of people that say stuff like that are not willing to do what it takes to make their dreams come true. The Marines have a saying, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. And that's just real. At the center of bringing any dream into fruition is self-discipline. You know, some, something as simple as food and eating, it, it's not about your, your body as much as it is about your mind. It's getting command of your mind to be able to choose actions that are in your own best interest. Every day, we are choosing shit that's not in our own best interest. Right, So if the world is attacking you and the world wants to fight you and the world's trying to hold you down, so you're going to kick yourself in the balls? So you're going to stop yourself from getting what you dream. Self-discipline is the center of all material success. You cannot win the war against the world if you can't win the war against your own mind. The only thing that... that I can see and you can never really look at yourself. Mm -hmm. The only thing that I see that is distinctly different about me is I'm not afraid to die on a treadmill, right? I will run. You would not be outworked. I will not be, be out, yeah. outworked, right. period. Yeah. You know, you might have more talent than me. You might be smarter than me. You might be sexier than me. You might be all of those things. You got it on me in nine categories. But if we get on the treadmill together, <laughs> right, there's two things. You're getting off first yeah. or I'm going to die. It's really that simple, right? So let's go back to the question about what if people block me out. It's going to be two options. Oh, yeah. I'm going to get back in or I'm going to be dead. Yeah. Right. It's like you're not going to outwork me. It's, it's, a, it's a very it's such a simple, basic concept is. The the guy who is willing to hustle the most is going to be the guy that just gets that loose ball. You know, he, oh, he got the oh, he got the oh, OK, he got two. He got, oh, God, he hustled. He grabbed that one. That was going to be out of bounds, but he saved it yeah. uh, back in. It's like. The commodity that I see the majority of people who aren't getting the places they want or aren't achieving the things that, that they want in this business is strictly based on hustle. It's strictly based on being outworked. It's strictly based on missing crucial opportunities. I say all the time, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. ready. I believe that self-discipline 
is the definition of self-love. That when you say that you love yourself, that means that you have behavior towards yourself that is loving. It's like you say to yourself, hey man, look, I know you want to eat that pizza and it'll be really good, you know, but I can't let you eat that, man, because if, if you eat that pizza, you're going to feel like shit, you know, and I, I just, I love you too much to let you eat that. And I think the word discipline has kind of gotten a, a bad name. We think about it in terms of punishment. I'm not, I'm not talking about discipline in that way. I'm talking about discipline in the sense that you, you forego immediate pleasure for the exchange of long-term self-respect. Self-love is, hey, look, I know you got a, a, a test on Monday, you know, and I know you really want to go out with your friends. It's Saturday night, you want to go out, but if you fail that test, you're not going to feel good about yourself. You know, I just, I love you too much to let you go out tonight. Self-discipline is self-love. If you want to be happy, you have to love yourself, which means you have to discipline your behavior. The road to sustained happiness is through disciplining your behavior. And I learned very young. From parents? From my parents, absolutely. Yeah. That you, you don't try to build a wall. You don't set out to build a wall. You don't say, I'm gonna big, build the biggest, baddest, greatest wall that's ever been built. You don't start there. You say, I'm gonna lay this brick yeah. as perfectly as a brick can be laid. There will not be one brick on the face of the earth that's gonna be laid better than this brick that I'm gonna lay in this next 10 minutes. Yeah. And you do that every single day. And soon you have a and wall. And soon you have a, a wall. wall. Yeah. And I think psychologically, the advantage that that, that gives me over, over a lot of people that I I'm, have been in competition with in different situations is it's difficult to take the first step when you look how big yeah, exactly. the, the task is. The task is never huge to me. It's always yeah, me one brick. Me too. Greatness is not this um, wonderful, esoteric, elusive, uh, godlike feature that only the special among us are, will ever taste. You know, it's something that truly exists in all of us. It's very simple. This is what I believe, and I'm willing to die for it. Yeah. Period. It's that simple. I know who I am, and I know what I believe. I know who I am, I know who, what and I believe. that's all I need to know. And that's, that's all, all I, I need, need to, to know. know. So from there, you do what you need to do. Yeah. You know? And I think what happens is we make the situation more complex than it has to because be. Because we're looking for complexity. There's got to be Absolutely. something complex to understand. It right? can't be that easy. The separation of talent and skill is one of the, 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 the greatest misunderstood concepts for people who are trying to excel, who have dreams that want to do things. Talent you have naturally. Skill is only developed by hours and hours and hours of beating on your craft. I've, I've never really viewed myself as particularly talented. Where I excel is ridiculous, sickening work ethic. You know, while the other guy's sleeping, I'm working. While the other guy's eating, I'm working. There's no easy way around it. No matter how talented you are, your talent is going to fail you if you're not skilled. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't study, if you don't work uh, really hard and dedicate yourself to being better every single day. If, there's, if there was one uh, concept that I would um, suggest to people to take a daily confrontation with is fear. Um, the... The, the problem with fear is that it lies, right? So fear tells you, hey, you know, if, if you say that to that girl, she's going to know she has you, you know, and she'll <laughs> never really be attracted to you <laughs> if she knows how much you attracted to her. <laughs> Don't say that, no. How we get her is when she walks by, ignore her. Uh. <laughs> Right, it's a you know, it's like, pop it on your shoulder. Fear tells you dumb <laughs> shit like that, right? <laughs>
<laughs> you know. So, you know, for, for me, the, the daily confrontation um, with, with fear has become a real practice for me since about three, three years ago, um, I, went, uh, I went skydiving in Dubai, right? And skydiving, skydiving is a really interesting confront with fear, right? So everything's normal. So you fly and you go up, you go up, you go up, you go up to 14,000 feet and you notice there's a, a, a light. It's red and it's yellow and green, right? So right now the light's red. So then you start thinking at some point the light's going to go green but you don't know what's going to happen, right? And you wait and it goes yellow and the light goes green, and somebody opens the door, and in that moment, you realize you've never been in a freaking airplane with the door open. <laughs> right? Terror, 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 right? So you go, and then, you know, if, you're, if you were smart, you sat in the back so you don't go first, right? And then people start going out of the airplane. And you go, and the guy walks you up to the end of the thing and you're standing and your toes are on the edge and you're looking out down to death. <laughs> and they say, on three. And they say, one, two. And he pushes you on two because people grab on three, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? And you go, <laughs> and you fall out of the airplane and in one second, you realize that it's the most blissful experience of your life. You're flying, right? It doesn't feel like falling, right? It's like the, you actually are kind of held a little bit by the wind. And then you start, and you, you start falling, you fall, and you, there's zero fear. You realize that the point of maximum danger is the point of minimum fear. It's bliss. It's bliss, and you're flying, <laughs> right? And you're doing that, and then 20 seconds, 25 seconds, 40 seconds, and you have enough time to just kind of be like, oh, shit, that's that building. I saw like that one. <laughs> oh, you can see the ocean. <laughs> right? You start doing all of that, and the, the lesson for me was, why were you scared in your bed the night before? Why did you, what do you need that fear for? Just don't go. Why are you scared in your bed 16 hours before you jump? Why are you scared in the car? Why could you not enjoy breakfast? What, 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 what did you need? That, the fear is fear of what? You're nowhere even near the airplane. Everything up to the stepping out, there's actually no reason to be scared. It only just ruins your day. You're, you don't have to jump. And then in that moment, all of a sudden, where you should be terrified is the most blissful experience of your life. And God placed the best things in life on the other side of terror. On the other side of your maximum fear are all of the best things in life.